TV land. La, Welcome la, la. to Channel Control. And again, one person shows up, and that's Matt. That's me. I, 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 didn't, I wasn't the one person last week, though. Yeah. That's, yeah. We talked about that. And yeah. I can never get both you guys here at the same time. <laughs> yeah, you're not going yeah, to for when, several, several yeah, weeks. for weeks now. Yeah. There's even a show we're going to miss because I will be at San Diego Comic-Con. Ooh, yeah. But more on that later. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... How was your week? It was good. It was good. Uh, a lot of TV to watch. Um, started the week off, and we'll talk about it later, um, watching a marathon of Wrecked, the TBS comedy. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I'll get into my thoughts about that a little bit later. You know, we also got into some wrestling, too. Watched a little bit of that, you know, and um, watched the season finale of American Gods. We'll get to that later. Yes, you will. And uh, yeah, yeah. Wrote, wrote some stories. Had a good time. All right. Yeah. How about you? The same. I wrote some game stories for us in the links. Yep. Uh, watched a lot of TV, wrestling, wrestling TV show. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty much it. Oh, something we didn't get into. What's How that? about that Game of Thrones season seven trailer? Yeah, that's all right. We'll talk about what? it later. We'll talk about it later. What? It's, it's all right. Awesome. It's all right. Amazing. <laughs> you are crazy. <laughs> well... Let's go ahead and move into that. Oh my god! So we'll we'll talk about that later, and you can tell us how awesome it it's is. It's amazing, and how you know, just eh, I am about it. Oh my god! No culture. All right, let's get to it. All right, Supernatural is spinning off another TV series that'll tried- run for thirteen more seasons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they tried this once before, but now they are going to do a. I've heard two names for it, Wayward Sisters, Wayward Daughters. Either way, it's going to be the female part that people have been asking for in Supernatural for about 12 years. Do you you know why they might name it Wayward Sisters or Wayward Daughters? Well, I know that kind of the theme song of the Supernatural boys are Wayward Sons, so they're going to do Wayward Daughters. Some Kansas in your life. So, um... Kim Rhodes, who has played Sheriff Jody Mills in the series, they're spinning off their own show with her and the girls that are living with her. Right now, there are two. It's uh, Claire and Alex. Alex, who are living with her. Two girls who were orphaned by the supernatural and blah, blah. They, they pretty much become de facto hunters. She made, she made her first appearance, I think, in uh, Jody Mills. She made her first appearance in season six, episode uh, 20, no, 15, in 2010. 2010. Yeah. Where the dead were coming back to life. Jody's, uh, Jody's son came back. Uh, Bobby's wife, who was cremated, came back. And a bunch of people in the town were coming back. And at some point, they, be- they went full zombie and started chewing out on people. That's how Jody lost her husband. Yeah. So, and her son, too. And, and her, yeah. well, her son was already dead. He just I came he back just, and then died again. Okay, yeah, I'm eating people now. Oh, God, that's right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, okay, so I'm, I'm watching Supernatural, this latest season on Netflix, because it's all on there right now. And I mm-hmm. think I maybe have like four episodes left and then I'm finally done. But, you know, when I found out about this, uh, shortly after I found out, there was the episode with Jody um, where they were co- it was a celebration celebrating the life of Asa Fox, and I really thought she was gonna die. And I was like, "Ooh, this is gonna be interesting. Maybe she's gonna be Ghost Jody Mills." And so now we've got like a really interesting twist about it. But then she survived. And yeah. then you had Claire who got bit by a werewolf, and I'm like, "Hold up, maybe Claire's gonna be a werewolf trying to." Like I guess deal with it with her sister while they're fighting other supernatural enemies and then I'm like then the, then she gets cured and I'm like I want there to be some sort of like drama to it like I want Alex to be a vampire and Claire to be a werewolf and they're all just kind of dealing with it and and instead it seems like they're making their own supernatural spin-off that's going to be exactly like what's already on supernatural except it might not be the apocalypse it yeah, might not they, be them saving the world they won't travel as much as it i think they're going to end up facing a bunch of either werewolf vampires and or gods cuz those are all the things that Jody has faced since her debut on this series has has come about yeah 
Uh, there was supposed to be a third girl that was part of the supernatural lore, but when Sam and Dean saved her, they gave her Jody's number to contact her and move away from the vampires. And the girl said, when they left, she kind of took the number, said, eh, fuck it, I'm staying here. Because she was so brainwashed by the vampires that she just, that's where she felt she belonged. So, mm-hmm. hey. So, I, I, I'm guessing that they're going to continue with Jody and these two girls. They may add other girls. I don't know. But it's just going to be them in one spot hunting. Look, and that's cool. That's all well and good. I, I like the Supernatural series. I do believe it's gone on way too long. Mm-hmm. It probably should have ended a few years back. But to make a spinoff for it and to essentially kind of do the same thing with characters that are actually not as likable as you might think yeah. is a little strange to me. Like, Claire has always annoyed me. Claire was kind of a little bitch when um, Castiel came back. Yes. And she's like, because that's her... F- well, Castiel is in her father's body. Yeah. And her mother dies. She asked Castiel, is my father still alive? He was like, nope. Nope. He's gone. <laughs> no, he's gone. Is he in heaven? No, he no longer exists. <laughs> wow. I'm just in his shell. I'm Don't here. Don't ask me about your dad. Your dad's dead. Not even dead, bro. Yeah. He is like he, erased. Non-existent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so she's like, oh, okay. And that kind of screwed her up for a while. Yeah. And then Alex, we haven't had enough screen time with Alex to no. really know if we like her or not. Like, I was really hoping that we were going to get something with her. But then they keep saying like, oh, Alex is away. Oh, Alex is doing this. Ah, uh, Alex is back at home. Like, it just, you never really get any sort of adventure with Alex to know if you really like her or not. Yeah. And to be honest, Jody, she could die, and I wouldn't really bat two eyes about it. I've I've gotten used to Jody. I mean, she's, like I said, she appeared in 2010, the first episode, uh, episode 15, and she's been in 12 episodes since yeah. then. Uh, about three or four times, it was just her name mentioned. So, you know, hey, call Jody. She'll take care of you. But. I, I'm used to her now. She's mm-hmm. all right. Like she live, die. I, I don't care. I liked Bobby I, more. I, yeah. I I miss Bobby more than I would miss anybody else on that show. Like the when Bobby died, that's when it really hurt. But if Jody died, it'd be like, all right, well, Jody died. All right, we'll, we'll find you know. we'll find a new adoptive mom for these kids. Yeah, you know, you you've <laughs> got your mom back. Like that's again, like Jody is. More and more becoming kind of that useless character that you don't need. And, I mean, the actress is great. I think she does a, a well-done job with the, the character. But I, I just don't think they're writing her correctly. But, I don't know. Okay. But we'll see how this goes. It'll run for 12 seasons. And then, yeah. you know. I mean, okay. Like I said they, in the beginning, I said they're doing this again. Because they tried in Season 9 with Bloodlines. Which was going to be from mainly the monster's point of view. It was going to be in Chicago with these... With a mafia styled monster families. The first two that were mentioned were a group of shapeshifters and werewolves. Mm-hmm. There were more, but they didn't talk about them. That was just what they were doing. And after the first, the backdoor episode they had in season nine, they said, Nope, we're not doing this. Yeah. And apparently fans were like, Thank God. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Supernatural spin off series coming sometime soon, maybe. Whatever. CW just needs to stop trying to make a spinoff of this and just funnel all their money into the DC TV. That's yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what. They That's it. Do. So okay. they are no longer CW. They are DC TV. That's it. All right. So talking about DC TV and superheroes, the Watchmen series. Who watches the Watchmen? Is coming to TV, but not CW. Not CW. Yeah. No. It's in development for HBO. That's right. Uh, and the guy who is working on it is the creator of The Leftovers and was one of the executive producers of Lost. It's Damon Lindloff. I am absolutely a huge fan of really? Damon Lindloff. I've watched okay. everything that he's done. And it, it's he's so great. Because most of the time, you get frustrated whenever they don't tell you anything. And you get more questions than you do answers. And yet, for him... I don't know. Like, he gets a pass just because of how he does it. Like, in Lost, it was annoying for a little bit, but it still it was enthralling. I think it went a season or so too long, but it was still enthralling to watch. You wanted to know what was going to happen at the end. Eh. For, for L- The Leftovers, I loved how it ended. I loved from the start to the finish how it was. 
And they even described and explained to you what happened to all the people who were departed. And it, it was really cool to watch. And I love how he develops characters and develops a story. So having that in mind, having his reputation with HBO, and then even having the fact that he's read The Watchmen before as a kid, I love this hiring of Damon Lindelof as the executive producer of The Watchmen. Like, I think he will adapt it perfectly, and it belongs on HBO. It is yeah. a series that needs to be on... That has that, like, no-holds-barred style of of casting and directing and whatever you want to do. Like, I, yeah, I would I mean, love that. How, how else are we going to see Blue Penis again? That's true. You wouldn't be able you, to see it. See, you wouldn't see, you're not seeing on CW. Nope. Say that right now. Dr. Manhattan would not be around. <laughs> you would just, he would wear shorts. That's what he would the wear. Entire, he wouldn't even yeah. wear that, that G string. No nope. Speedo he wears, whatever. Nope. But, um, we talked about this on SENS the, this, this past Thursday. And at the end, I was kind of like, you know, I think, it could be done because there was a discussion about how you're going to do this. How are you going to pull this show off? If they go from the end of the movie, removing Dr. Manhattan from this whole thing, maybe giving him some cameos every now and then, and you stick with these street-level people, I'll, uh, well, you can't do Joker. He's dead. Yeah. But, you know, all, all the other characters. You can pull it off. However, if you do that, we don't have Rorschach. Right. So you do need Rorschach yeah, yeah, for we, a Watchmen we, we need TV show. For TV, so. Well, I'm curious about how they're going to do it. How if it's going to be maybe you see where they are, kind of like the same events that you saw in Watchmen, mm -hmm. the movie by Zack Snyder. Maybe you see like not necessarily verbatim, like you you see kind of what they're doing in the comics, try to be more comic based, and then have certain episodes that focus on individual characters. I think that would probably be a better way of going about it. Just so you can establish who was Owlman, who was Joker, who was uh, Rorschach. Mm. And I, I can't remember the, the woman's name. But, you know... Uh, something Spectre? Yeah, something. Um, so it would be a good idea to kind of do that while, uh, while still following the comics as close as possible. Because there's a lot... This is a big series that Alan Moore created. I mean, mm. it's his masterpiece. So there's a lot to go off of that that Zack Snyder didn't even touch in the in his first creation of The Watchmen. So I think that I, I'm hoping that they do it that way. That you really get to know and understand each of these characters while still have that little supernatural elements that they have in the comics to where you're not really sure what the hell's going on, but you don't really need to know because Damon Lindelof is never going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> not new, not until they say we're canceling the series. Yeah, all right, all right. I gotta tell these people, I gotta lay everything out for them. <laughs> Done. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I mean, Lin, Lin Loff, Lin Loff, Lin Loff. Um, I've seen some of Lost. I watched up to season three, and at season three, I was like, I'm done. Mm -hmm. That was it for me. I didn't know anything until people told me what happened at the at the season finale. Leftovers. I watched the first episode. I told you first first. Two episodes, wasn't into it, yeah. but you said it was great. I'll take your word for it. At some point, I'll watch it. Who knows when. Hey, you, you were saying that you couldn't get into The Leftovers, and then soon, boom, you got into it. So, you just, <laughs> come on, <laughs> trust it, trust the judgment, give uh, it some time, you'll get right. there. Okay, Um. yeah, let's just move along. <laughs> let's, let's just get out of here. Big Brother 19. I can't believe it's already at 19 freaking seasons. CBS like has nothing else to do during the summer. No. Not one Not darn anything. thing. And you know, I, I used to love Big Brother. I was really into it for a long time. I would watch it every Tuesday, every Thursday, every Sunday. Like I was all over everything that was Big Brother. I would even like subscribe to like the live blogs that people were posting whenever mm -hmm. they were watching the feed like 24 hours a day so I could like find out, oh my God, who won Head of Household before I even watched it. Like I was super into it. And then I went to one of their casting calls and I saw how they went about it. Like they gave me, they put me in a room with like five other people uh -huh. and it was like two minutes. They were like, okay, I'm going to ask you two questions. Boom, you're out. That's it. 
and you were done. And I was like, okay, this is lame. I drove all the way to Oklahoma City for this. I'm out. And then after that, like, seeing who they kept picking for the next few years, I was like, nah, I don't really care. I kind of got jaded. Okay. Well, I watched it, I think, I saw it in season 12 or 13. Mm -hmm. And I avoided reality TV shows like the plague. I did not want to watch them. I didn't give a crap about them. And I happened to watch Big Brother 13. And I was like... Wow, I have been I've been missing this. This is awesome. This is who who is a fight waiting to happen. Who is the the big character in that one? Who are the characters oh, in that? God, one? I don't remember that anymore. <laughs> I'm just trying. Was it Mike Boogie and Doctor? Um, I, I can't remember the the doctor's name, but that was the year that I first started watching when those two were together, mm -hmm. and they just like controlled the entire household, and then Mike Boogie ended up winning. Yeah. But that was that was probably one of my favorite the, seasons. The ones ever. that I really, the ones that I still remember, is Rachel and Brendan. Not from that season, but mm -hmm. from from the Big Brother series itself. Yeah, I saw Rachel and I was like, mm, "Big old redhead, <laughs> yeah, buddy, love me redhead." And then she spoke, "Son of a bitch." <laughs> Oh my god! But by, by the end of that one, I was like, "Vote her out, get her out of the house, kid, stab her in her sleep." <laughs> Rachel is a horrible person. Well, yeah, that's <laughs> see, that's the thing. Like, I think that's why I kind of got jaded about it. Was because like, and and you can go over like the new house guests, but mm -hmm. they're always like these pretty people that are like the worst people ever imaginable. I mean, some of them are nice. Some yeah, of them some have redeeming nice, yeah. qualities, but the other ones are just like. Ugh, Really? It's like you suck as a You're human a being. person? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's let's go through this. What is it? 16 guests or whatever. The first one is Christmas Abbott. 35 year old uh from Lynchburg, VA, lives in Raleigh, North Carolina, and she's a fitness superstar. I've looked up some of her stuff. This woman has money. Mm. She's on Instagram. She's got about Close to 500k followers. She's written books. She does videos. She's a fitness guru. All this stuff. They put her in, I guess, because she's hot and she is hot. Uh, well, also they probably put her in there because they're like, oh, well, she knows how to work a camera. So yeah, let's mm -hmm. just go ahead and put her in there. Next we have is Matthew Kleins. He's from Arlington, Virginia. 33 years old, renovation consultant. He's gonna renovate the Not, big bro big brother house. Yeah, nothing really incredible about him then we have dominique cooper 30 years old from lives in woodbridge virginia government engineer she engineers the government she's got an instagram youtube linkedin i you know i didn't look her up either elena davies from dallas texas that one's everyone gonna roof, roof. oh hold up she's a radio personality uh-huh Oh, okay. <laughs> Jason Dent from Iowa. He's a rodeo clown. Of course he is. Now, this is the guy that needs to win the money because he's a rodeo clown. Well, I, actually, how much do they get paid? Oh, I'm sure they get a lot yeah, of, they, like, they, incidental coverage or whatever. Yeah, they got to get something. Yeah. Jessica Graff. Oh, hot. She's a VIP concierge out of L.A., a.k.a. she was trying to be an actress. Uh-huh. And got stuck yep. in L.A. Cameron Hurd, a microbiologist. Oh, he's going to be the one to watch. I think he, he's going to be the crafty one. He's he's, gonna, he's, he's the he's smart gonna one. He's going to be like uh, Ian from 17? 16, 17? I haven't the, watched for the, two seasons, okay, so I don't know. He was a geologist, something like that. Or maybe he was... Wait, I think he was a geology student or something. Mm -hmm. And... Nerd from hell. But okay. He, but he ended up winning because he just kind of sat back and let everybody do their stuff. And he'd make friends on this side and friends on this side. And everybody left Ian alone. Yep. Until Ian won. It was won. too late. <laughs> Mark Jansen from New York, Grand Island, a personal trainer. Yep. Douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> Megan Louder. There's going to be arguments with her. She's a dog walker from Phoenix, Arizona. She's... She just has that look. 
like she wants to argue with people. <laughs> you are better than me. <laughs> so, Josh Martinez. Hair care sale. All right. For him. When I looked at him, I thought, okay, that's the gay guy or, or the gay person yeah. on the series. And he says he has a daughter and he likes being an asshole. He doesn't care what people think. He, you know, I'm going to do for me and screw everybody else. And he's getting kicked out. Uh, I think he might make a few friends first. Yeah. He might win a few HOHs. Yeah. Cody Nicholson from uh, lives in Plano, Texas. Good for him. Construction sales rep. He's the pretty boy. Definite show match material right here. Yep. Don't know who. He is a showman. We have Probably Alex Al. Alex Al from Camarillo, California. Eco-friendly marketing rep. Oh my gosh. She's going to be the one that says, I can't eat the slop. I can't. It's mm-hmm. so gross. Let's I'll, recycle I'll, this, guys. I'll, I'll do anything. Just don't, just don't give me slop. Yeah. Jillian Parker. Timeshare time sales God, rep. everybody's going to hate her. The cute bubbly blonde with the hi i shall i sell timeshares mm-hmm. everyone's gonna try to kill her in her sleep <laughs> the old guy yeah kevin schlehuber i guess yeah Schle- 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 schlehuber schlehuber boston mess stay at home dad good for him he's awesome. living the dream awesome guy wish i could oh huh. ramsey soto grand rapids michigan cosplay no. artist Cosplay artist. <laughs> Cosplay artist. Cosplay artist. Raven Walton, Devall's Bluff, Arkansas, dance teacher, 23 years old. This picture here really does her no justice. It's like Pippi Longstocking if she was 40. And, she's, needed, and she's 23. They needed that redhead. <laughs> That's what it was. So, uh, I don't know. I, like they keep I, putting I would like, like to say that Christmas would be the best at some of the physical matches. Possibly. But yeah, what, what were you going to say? Well, I was going to say that, you know, they've been doing a lot of promoting for it and they keep like putting the picture up there and they're like, you're going to want to know them. Mm-hmm. You're going to want to know him. You're going to want to get to know this girl. And I'm like, do I? Like, will I? Because this is a live show, essentially. So you don't know what they're going to do unless it's scripted all reality tv is scripted right now (laughs) (laughs) there was one girl i didn't even look the name or who it was but they said something about she posed nude for penthouse or playboy or something but again i didn't read the whole article to see which one it was i'm gonna go look for it later to find out which one it is yeah and you know find out i think here's my issue i want real people and they're not giving us real people. We've mm-hmm. got a social media personality. You've got a radio personality. You've got other people that like have made their name through like social media and other stuff. People that don't necessarily need more, more exposure. And yet they're trying to make stars out of people who are already in their own way stars with their own followers. And instead you're not getting like the realistic real people. Instead you're getting like facades. So then that whole Mm -hmm. realistic idea of a reality show just gets thrown out the window because now you've got people who just seem fake. And that's my issue with it. Like I used to love Big Brother, but it's like their, their casting choices have... They're they're obvious in the direction that they keep going, and that's kind of annoying to me. Yeah, and if if you have someone who knows how to work social media, you get in that house. You you already have someone of a following, then you gain yeah probably five hundred thousand to a million more people to your account. Let's just say, and then when you come out, if you know how to work it, you can make your money. Yeah. You don't have to get that win that 500000 that Big Brother's giving you. Yeah. So, well, I, I can understand your point. And then also think about the fan voting. Because there are several times throughout the season, CBS likes to do Big Brother fan voting. Mm-hmm. Where, okay, uh, go ahead and vote for your the person that you want to like not have slot for a week. Or something like that. Or... Um, vote for the food item that they can only eat for a week. Okay, vote for the person that you want to win $10,000. The people that are that have those followings are going to watch 
because their favorite people are on there. And then they're going to vote so that way their favorite person kind of has a leg up over everybody else. Yeah. So uh, that makes it more of an issue because now it's not fair game. Now you're using what you've already established, which is not helpful to a guy who's like a microbiologist who just sits in a lab all day and doesn't have a social media following. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the the other thing that I hate about these shows, like this, the whole voting thing you mentioned, is you can vote multiple times. Yes. That, that uh, American Idol, this whole multiple voting thing, I have never liked. Yeah. You vote once, it marks it marks on your IP and you can't use that IP again mm-hmm. to vote again. You get one vote and that's it. Yeah. Not like I'm going to vote for this person 10 times or 100 times a day cuz there are people who do that. I remember I used to um back in the day when American Idol was like the first season of it. Uh, this was before the internet was a really big deal. Yeah. So you had to call whenever you wanted to vote for somebody. And I remember my mom and I would both call but the number that we wanted that person to win, like over and over and over and over. And it got to the point where it was just really annoying. So, yeah, I, I'm with you. Multiple voting is terrible. Just have one vote and be done. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, we got on yeah. a soapbox yeah, yeah, about Big Brother there yeah, for a second. Yeah, it, it, it started good, then it got really bad. So, <laughs> let's move into another that's going to end up bad story. Star Trek Discovery. People are bitching about Sonequa Martin Green and the whole cast because they consider it too diverse. Ugh. Who cares? The show are saying that it's white genocide. That's stupid. The only they say the only white character on the show is gay. And that's a problem for people. Look, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? <laughs> There's too many girls in Star Wars. There's too many girls here. It's too diverse here. There aren't a black stormtrooper. No way. Look, you stupid sons of bitches. If there are Not black our people audience. Not in our the audience. military... <laughs> If there are people in the military, I am an ex-Marine. If they did something in the, some future movie where all oh, Marines, 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 and then a black Marine shows up, would you say, oh, wait, wait, we can't have black Marines? Why the fuck not? I, I mean, I was just going to do the point that it's a show about aliens and discovery. Yeah. So it would be diverse already it should be <laughs> instead of arguing about the good the the actual thing you should argue about like why the hell does the klingons look like that sure yeah that's fine that's a good argument you're arguing about we got a black woman and an asian woman and a black man and the bad to shut okay. the hell up look <laughs> it, it, it might have been a deal and people need to understand that yes while a lot of these companies a lot of casting companies will try to be diverse with their selections it also is a fact that, look, if this person is better than this person, then we're going to go with this person regardless of their skin color. If that just means that we've got uh, an Asian woman or a black man that beats out a white woman or a white man, it doesn't matter. Like, that, so be it. Those two other people need to go back to whatever acting school they came from and learn how to be a better actor. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, a lot sometimes... Maybe if you've got, if you've realized, oh man, maybe we've casted too many white people, then you really will kind of try and selectively pick a different, uh, a, a different um, race. So that way you have a little bit more diversity. But if in this case, I'm pretty sure nobody said, hey, I want no white people. <laughs> Like, that's insane. No, they probably yeah. went with the best person that they had, and they were like, you know what? I think this guy is your best bet. I'm pretty sure the director or the executive producer was like, hold up, hold up, hold up. Where are my whites? I don't see my whites. Well, here's your white. Oh, great, great, great. He's not gay, is he? He's gay. God dang it. <laughs> we're doing white genocide. Nobody said that. <laughs> Nobody cares. You're making something that's out of nothing. It's yeah. nothing. 
Just many- enjoy the show. A show about diversity because it's an alien exploration show. Come on. Uh, a show that pushed the envelope when you had a white man kiss a black woman. A horror. Is a horror? A horror, yeah. A horror. A horror? And Spock was supposed to kiss her, and William Shatner was like, <laughs> this, is my, this is my show. If anybody kisses a black woman, it's going to be me. <laughs> oh, no wonder they changed it for the movie. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, Sonequa Martin Green came out and said, Well, I would encourage them to key into the essence and spirit of Star Trek that, is, that has made it the legacy it is. And that's looking across the way to the person sitting in front of you and realizing you are the same, that they are not separate from you, and we are all one. She wanted to say some other things about it, but basically it's what we said. The bare essence of Star Trek is exploration, diversity, meeting other people, and, you know, not killing them. <laughs> just having sex with them. So, yeah. A well, lot. Like Kirk, yeah. He, Kirk he, just having alien babies all throughout the galaxy. He's probably got a baby horda. Oh, yeah. That was, <laughs> yeah. Everywhere. Absolutely. Okay, so let's move along, because... Now, now I'm I'm even behind Star Trek Discovery more. I may, I may just pay for it. God damn it. Anyway, Glow season one has hit Netflix. Bro, I've watched every episode, and I gotta tell you, I feel the glow. I feel it. You feel the glow. It's so good. <laughs> I loved it. I loved every moment of it. Um, you, you get to see them from the beginning where you, you follow, follow Alison Brie mm-hmm. while she is trying to become an actress in Hollywood. And she's not doing a very good job of it. No, she's and not. And then she gets this job and she meets Mark Marin, who is absolutely fantastic on this show. Uh, his sultry kind of salty attitude, and I said sultry, that's not what the right word. word. <laughs> salty attitude, and uh, kind of that um, Tom Hanks, a League of Their Own style mm-hmm. character. Yeah, uh, he he's fantastic in this, and the whole thing is great. And I love how they build up, and you see how they get better and better and better and better to the point where they finally have a show, and they actually pull it off like you would watch an old school eighties wrestling tv show and it it was great to watch i loved it now i mean if you don't know anything about glow you can go on youtube and you could probably find some clip of glow wrestling gorgeously easy wrestling and watch that as far as this tv series i liked the music in it because you know that's music i grew up listening to yeah so yeah the when the music they, they played for the beginning and the end of the episode was awesome everything in between that eh you didn't like the show? It was all right. I loved it. It it kind of plodded along for a while. Now, yes, once once they started, once uh her her rival, the girl that she slept with her husband, the, yeah, the one that plays Liberty Bell, yes, and Ruth, the, that's the character, Debbie name. Egan, Debbie Egan is yeah. name? okay, yeah. So, um, once they started working together and practicing and doing this stuff and got over the whole. You slept with my husband. I'm sorry I slept with your husband thing. I was like, all right, okay. I, I'm getting into this show now. Then he shows up now and pulls her out of everything, just screws everything up. I'm like, come on. You're supposed to be, you're, you're fighting. You're, you're a fighter. Keep going. I didn't expect her to just kind of give up in that one episode. Again, I have not watched the last one, so I don't know whatever. I mean... Overall, I like it. Yeah. It's just, it just moved a little bit slow for me. I agree. It does. Um, And there are certain parts where I agree with you too, that there are little plot holes that Mm -hmm. it doesn't, it didn't seem like they knew how to get around it. So they just kind of went with wherever they were going and just decided to just boom, this is how it is. Uh, But, you know, that aside, I, I liked the overall story of it. I like how they put it together. And I love I love that you got to see a lot of elements that were issues back in the 80s. Things that you, you don't you won't remember nowadays. Yeah. Uh, the fact that blow was just something that was normal like everybody, you know, <laughs> snuffed snorted cocaine. So it it's just fun to watch and that was a drug of choice back then. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Uh but you know, it, it's just fun to watch and I, I loved every moment of I loved how they brought in 
actual wrestlers from today. Like you mm-hmm. had Johnny Mundo, Johnny Morrison, whatever you call him. Um, you had uh, Tyrus from TNA. He was the brother, one of the the bigger brother of um, Machu, Picchu. Machu Picchu. Yeah, or, or or Camille, I think her name was on the show. You had um, what's his name? Uh, Steel Horse. That was Alex Riley from WWE. I had to look him up because I couldn't remember. I was like, wait a second. I know who that guy was. <laughs> that was Alex Riley. He was on WWE for a while. Uh, and then even the uh, the other guy that he had too, um, I think it was Rick Rude or something like that. So it, all of it was just so fun to watch. And and as like people who watch wrestling like we do, just mm-hmm. to kind of keep up with our friends who watch wrestling, it was a really interesting thing to see how it is on kind of a behind the scenes sort of style, you know, how that brotherhood, that sisterhood, whatever you want to call it is formed by being together, by respecting each other and by how you're working in the ring and, and how you're figuring out how to do each of these moves. Like whenever they're doing that little, uh, that dance where they're kind of holding each other at the first part, that's a really cool move to, to figure out how things are going on and, Mm -hmm. and to see, how like they're talking to each other and where they're gonna go next yeah, and when, like when she says throw me yeah when they're just locked up yeah like <laughs> it's cool you know like so I mean watching wrestling you see how the professionals do it now and it's all seamless and you see how these girls are doing it and you you know how they're all kind of having issues with it and they're not quite polished yet to see how they start and how they finish is just really cool to watch and I, I loved it I can't wait for season two yeah I mean don't don't get me wrong I'm not saying it's horrible. For me, it was just a bit slow. It is slow. Overall, it's it's a decent series, and I will be looking forward to season two. Mm-hmm. So it's funny yeah. too, by the way. It's really funny. Like there are certain moments where you had uh, Sheila, the she wolf, where they asked her to play piano for entrance musics for entrance entrance music. Yeah, and uh, mm-hmm. you've got the first one coming out, and she's like dun 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 whatever. And then the next person comes out. She's like, dun, 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 dun. And he's like, he's like is that the only song you know? It is the only is song, the song I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's great. It's just funny to watch. I love it. And I she, wish I wish BC like was she, here. Sheila looked like she was ready to tear someone, someone's throat out. When she, she just shows up, she's just on furs and yeah. this and all this stuff. And when you talk to her, she's... Hey. She's... Quiet, reserved. Yep. She's actually pretty freaking smart. She is. <laughs> and I wish BC was here because he would have a whole lot more to say oh, yeah, about would, Glow. Because he'd have so much more. Yeah. I mean, I barely remember watching Glow back in the 80s. So anyway, yeah, watch yeah. it. You you will like it. And let's move along. Yes. Now, I put one on here. I didn't get a chance to watch it yet, but I will be watching later today or tomorrow. And that's... Shameless season seven. I haven't watched any Shameless. I started watching it once they put it on on Netflix, and I pretty much binge watched the first five seasons. Mm-hmm. Then they put six on there, and now they've got seven on there. And I can't wait to get to that one. This family is just so horrible. Um, Lacey, William H Macy, w- Macy, yes, William yeah. H Macy. Sorry, I'm thinking Lacey. William H Macy as the father. The the, the head of the Gallagher clan, he is a piece of shit. He is a horrible human being, alcoholic, junkie, just looking to scam any person. No one is safe from him. Fiona, this girl will never be happy in love, ever. And the rest of the kids are just, they're just surviving. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the series is extremely funny, bit adult at times, and... I, I don't know what, what more I could say about this thing. It, it just, just check it out. It's mm-hmm. on there if you want. You can watch binge watch the whole seven seasons. And if you don't like it, come back on and say, hey, fuck you, Rob. I hated it. Uh, I wouldn't <laughs> say that verbatim, but sure. But yeah, you know, yeah. whatever. <laughs> uh, that show that I talked about uh, a couple of weeks ago, Queen Sugar, that was coming out on DVD. The one that we were like, out of sight. Yeah, we, we wish it was like. Yeah, that. we yeah. wish it was. Yeah. Like, I, I still do. Yeah, I watched the first two episodes. They they put it on Hulu shortly mm-hmm. after we we talked about it. Oh, before cool. Before the second season premiere came up, they put it on. We lost uh, Spidey. Spider Man. Well, Spidey had something to do. He had to somebody need somebody needed one. Yeah, everybody gets uh, one. Yeah, so they put it on Hulu, and I watched the first episodes. It's okay. Like I said, I just watched the first two. I know a lot of people I've seen 
comments or whatever that people love this show. Again, another one moving slow for me. Plus, it's also not the kind of show that I normally watch. Mm-hmm. So, eh, it's all right. The only thing I did mess up, I thought it was two brothers and a sister. It's two sisters. Okay. And a brother. The brother is the one that got out of the prison, and he's kind of still screwing up. But he's he's trying to do right. But the way he's doing things, he could end up back in jail at any moment. All right. Um, one sister, the one played by Rutina Wesley. Okay, yeah, from, yeah. From, from True Blood. True Blood. Yeah. She's the sister that's kind of like, I don't give a damn about none of y'all. That's, that's She's her. She's like, you, you were in prison and you just came back, so you're not going to tell us how we're going to do things. And the other sister went off to marry some basketball star and she was living a high life. Then when dad died, she's going to come back and it's like, you sure as hell not going to tell us how to do things around here. Yeah. See, that, that Rutina Wesley um, description you gave, mm-hmm. that's her pigeonhole. Because that's the character that she was in True Blood. And that she just hasn't been able to get out of that to show range. So it's no surprise that that's how she is in Queen Sugar. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to keep on watching it. But again, like I said, it's not a show I normally watch. And... Honestly, watching this, those two episodes, this is the problem I'm really having with it. You know, you have a one-hour episode, and you watch it, and it feels like it's three hours. That's kind of where I am mm-hmm. with Queen Sugar. It's like, this fucking thing is taking forever to end. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll see. But, you know, if you want to watch it, it's on Hulu. Yep. So... Let's go on into our channel surfing segment. You're so ready to talk about this. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. Let's get to it. American Gods. And the crowd goes mild. Yeah. <laughs> Look, okay, so we, um, I think it was Thursday night before we had SCNS where we normally have. Uh, we, we had a discussion over dinner about the American Gods season finale, and we were talking with uh, Cora. And for me, I was saying that I didn't actually like the season finale. Like, there was just nothing big that really happened. Like, they, they had said, they were like, oh, yeah, well, you know, we finally found saw Odin. That's awesome. And I'm like, did we, though? Like, that's cool that we saw Odin, but it wasn't a big reveal. We already knew who he was. We knew Mr. Wednesday was Odin. And it's not because, like, you looked it up online. It's because a couple of episodes prior, they said who he was. So the fact that Shadow was like, who are you? Bro, you know who he is. He keeps telling you who he is. Like, that, everybody else keeps telling you that he's Odin. Why haven't you figured it out? And so it, then he's like, I'm the, Odin. It's okay. It's just a big reveal for Shadow. And, like, look. and even when he said it, I'm like, I am Odin. I expected more thunder and lightning, more a bellow, bellowing in the voice or whatever, you know, just deeper and thunderous. And it was just like me saying, I am Odin. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> like if they had held off and maybe they talked about like, hi there. Uh, maybe if they talked about like something else or maybe just insinuated a little bit more whenever the bad guys came in to talk to uh, Shadow and Mr. Wednesday at the interrogation room, and they didn't just outright say that you'd get the Odin missile, then <laughs> I I think that would have been a better reveal because, okay, we still don't know who the hell this guy is. I'm into it, but I had always had a feeling it might be Odin. But regardless, mm-hmm. like that's kind of where they lost me, was that they already showed who he was, and so their big reveal was, oh, I'm Odin. Bro, I already knew that. Like, tell me something different. It would have been different. He was like, I'm Zeus. Hold up. You're Zeus? That's cool. That's totally a flip the script kind of moment. I'm into this now. But you didn't. You said, I'm Odin. You kill some faceless guys. You didn't even kill an actual god, which I would have been even more into if you had killed one of the gods, whether it was technology or you killed media, whatever it was. Instead, you didn't. And it's like, okay, well, now we have a war. Great. Cool. Mm-hmm. It seemed like the episode before the season finale. Because even when Dead Wife was like, I need to talk to my husband. That's something that I wanted to see in the next episode. But we didn't get it. Instead, it's just like, Shadow's like, oh, you're here. That's super cool. <laughs> and she, and she, I, I believe now. Yeah, and she's just like, Shadow, 
We need to talk. Oh. Great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, okay, we did say that all these things about the episode we didn't like. However, to me, it was still a good episode. It was a good episode. We got to see Mr. Nancy finale. again in the beginning. Yeah. Who, he's doing something for Odin, and he just stops, and he's like, I'm going to tell a story. And Odin's like, oh, good God. Just <laughs> finish the job. And he's like, let me tell a goddamn story. <laughs> And then he goes in the story about Bilkis as far as what she was like way back when to now. And I didn't even know she had hit hard times like that. Yeah. But they go through her whole story. Then you get to meet Ostara or Easter played by Kristen Chenoweth. She's amazing. Oh, that woman. I, I even told you. Sometimes, I don't know. There's one time I see her and I'm like, eh, eh. Then another time you see her and she's like, oh my God, this woman's beautiful. Yeah. But... Overall, her portrayal of Easter, and as the director said, a woman who is a devout Christian having to play someone who hates, who is annoyed by Jesus Christ. <laughs> and Jesus is all in her freaking home. Because there's like 36 and, different yeah, Jesus Christ. There's a whole bunch of Jesus Christ. It depends on the person who's looking at it. Like, yeah. I may, like, I may see a Jesus who's black. Someone may see one who's Mexican or Swedish or whatever, Norwegian, whatever, the blonde hair, tall, blah, blah. Anyway, yeah, you know. Yeah, you know, I got it, I got it, I got it. I'm sorry if I'm stereotyping. I apologize to all Norwegians. Anyway. Big fan base. Yeah. That, <laughs> <laughs> those, those folks, I mean, everything they showed throughout the episode was good. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. It was just the ending when you've got these gods and these gods coming together and there's, you want to see something happen. And it's just kind of like, okay, just uh, make the plants go back in the ground. And if people want stuff to work again in this world, they got to pray to us. Yeah. And, and that's, that's my main issue. Like you could have shown something super brutal, something amazing. And instead we saw a setup, mm -hmm. a setup to, Something that we won't get any sort of fruition out of until next year, probably. So that's where the lackluster part of it comes into. Great season. I love American Gods. I thought yeah. it was a great season and, and I enjoyed the heck out of the series. But that's not a great way to end it. And I think a lot of American Gods apologists are going to be like, but we did see something, guys. We saw that we're getting a war. Nah, bro, we already knew we were yeah, going to get a war. It's series, not hard to figure that out. A war. <laughs> yeah, it's not hard to figure out that we're going to get a war. You're just setting up next season without really giving us anything to be excited about for next season. Like, if you had killed somebody, and I know that we're kind of in a violent kind of nature nowadays with the things that we watch, and, you know, maybe that's something that's kind of holding us back a little bit, but this is stars, this isn't like ABC or NBC or anything mm -hmm. like that. This is stars where you can do whatever the hell you want to do, really. This is a and show you that didn't... has Ash versus the Evil Dead. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you didn't give us that paid cable subscription ending. You know? Kind of get what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was just kind of a, that's the end of our season. Stay tuned for the war next season. Great. I got to wait a year now. Like, at least Game of Thrones killed Sean Bean in the episode before. Like, okay, <laughs> we're done. Season one, I'm good. All right, fine. Yeah, well, what the hell is going to happen now? I'm hooked. Now on this one, it's like, well, we've recruited Easter. We got spring. Um, Bill Quist is coming. That's cool. Uh, Dead Wife has something to say. Matt Sweeney killed Dead Wife. Matt Sweeney. Brought her back to life. <laughs> Brought her back to life. Um, now, if they, yeah. had, if they had done something where Vulcan had made this sword for Odin and Odin took the sword and just left, and then when these when the new guys show up and Vulcan shows up with them and then goes into the whole, well, you know, I had to tell these guys, blah, blah, so on, so on, and Odin took his sword out and plunged it into Vulcan's chest or, or cut his head off them, I'd have been like... Good episode. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Wonderful. Except then the question would be, why the hell did Vulcan give him a god killer? <laughs> like, that makes no sense. I don't know. Who knows? 
But yeah, American Gods, we'll find out more stuff next season. It was a good season. I just, I guess I wanted a little bit more oomph. Yeah. And I think the oomph might have been the name reveal of Odin, but it could have been better done. Yeah. That's my, that's my piece on that. Okay. So moving along to your show that you watched this week. Wrecked! TBS's Wrecked. It's a lost spoof. And it's so great. I, like I said, I watched the marathon this past weekend, and I loved every minute of it. It's so freaking funny. And it, it's it's just silly in the way that they do it. Like, a lot of the uh, characters are... They're not realistic, but sometimes they are. It's just it's so funny to watch how they are and, and what they do. Like, there's one guy who... He's, mar- he's not married, but he's with this other woman... And, like, he's talking about how, like, he lost a child. And uh, th- this other guy, this New England, New-, New Zealand guy is like, oh, man, I'm so sorry. You know, and he starts giving him stuff out of, like, pity for him. Mm. And then he realizes that he's not talking about losing a child. He's talking about losing a golf club. And how, like, <laughs> he was like, what? You thought I was talking about a child? Ha! Stupid. <laughs> no, I'm totally keeping all this stuff you gave me. Like, <laughs> It's so funny, just everything they they do with it. And then uh, season two just started. They started with a, a two episode uh, premiere. It was great. They they showed off like these new pirates that come to the island and start taking over. And um, this guy who was a sports agent has to go over there and just try to like uh, negotiate with them. But they keep taking all of his stuff every time he brings stuff to them. And then finally, like you know, he figures out a way. It, it's just great. Like. They at one point they killed Chris Bosch, like the the basketball player, because it was it was a backstory thing. They were like, yeah, uh, Chris, yeah, I, I'm totally I represent Chris Bosch. Like, oh yeah, you you represent Chris Bosch. Yeah, you're a liar. This person represents Chris Bosch. We know because she's in jail because she inc- accidentally killed Chris Bosch. It's because like they gave him like a samurai sword. To, you know, like, convince him to join up with them. And he's, like, in the office, just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God! <laughs> he cuts his own neck. <laughs> the whole show is just so funny. I, I When I first saw it, I didn't think it was going to last. But, man, it gets so much better. It's great. So, uh, wrecked on TBS? Yeah, said? it's on TBS. All right. So, I guess we can look forward to a DVD for that sometime soon, or... Go to TBS. Yeah, I'm sure they, they have all the episodes, the on, episodes on, on there. there. Well, I think TBS also has their episodes on Hulu, so I, I'll have to look at that to figure okay. out where it is. All right, so check out Wrecked. Mm-hmm. And to end our show off are our DVD releases of the week, and we have The Strain Season 3. Oh, my God. That, has that show ended yet? No, they have. Oh, I man. think they have one more season left, and <sighs> season. that's it. Season I'm, one was super good. Yeah, it was then, it was awesome. And then season two just freaking no it didn't gradually, it nosedived. And I did not I think I watched two episodes in season three and I was just like, I, I can't do it. Yeah. I can't do it. I mean there may be someone out there that likes it, but so yeah, the DVD is coming out. Dirty Dancing, the television special. <clears throat> if you want to waste your money on it. <laughs> Cause I I heard had Nothing the good time about this. Of my life. And I owe it all to you. Go ahead and just jump. I'm gonna catch you. I'm gonna do the dirty dancing like scene. No? I will it? I will break your neck. No, it's fine. It's pro, it's cool. <laughs> hey, something to watch. Check out SNL's um Dirty Dancing spoof. It's so good. Just just check it out. Yeah, you probably should look that up instead of buying this DVD because man, people tore this thing apart. And being that my cousin watches when I was a kid as much as I watched Lost Boys Mm -hmm. more than 150 times, I didn't want to see Dirty Dancing, period. And then to hear everyone who loved this movie tear it apart the next day on Good Morning America and so on, I was like, yeah, it's a good thing I didn't watch it. All right. So I'm fine. Well, like, okay. I actually know some people that do, that perform in these little specials that they have. Mm -hmm. I... That being said, and you know, you should watch them because they're amazing in it. Um, I just don't care about these kind of like live events where mm-hmm. we redo something that was a classic a long time ago. Like, 
You could not, and I'd be okay. Can't wait for Rent on Fox. No. I already saw it. It was called Team America. Um, so then the last one. The last one is Prison Break, the event series. I guess is the last one that just happened. I don't know if they're coming back. I thought that it was canceled, but it may not be. It, it's kind of like, here's a Prison Break series. If we feel like doing another one, we'll do it. But the DVD set is coming out for this, for this last season. So uh, if you want it. Pick it up. I loved I loved Prison Break when it first came out. I thought it was awesome. I think it was it had an issue with kind of going too long as as most of these shows do. But I haven't watched the event series just because I I hadn't gotten as far as I wanted to because it's some I, was, I think it was like season three. I just kind of stopped watching. Um, so I, I, I it's interesting. I would like to see a return, but then again, like if it's a return, like X Files was a return, I'm good. So, we're done. Yes, we are. Absolutely, completely spent. Thank you for watching Channel Control. I am Rob Entropy, N-T-R-O-P-I-1 on, on the Twitters. And Matt? Yeah, I'm Matt, and you can find me at Move the Joystick on any of the social medias and uh, all other kinds of shows that we do, SCNS Live on Thursday nights, uh, Nerd Interference every other Saturday, uh, then you've also got uh, What the Force podcast on Friday nights at Nerdvana. Uh, so a lot of things that you can catch me on and on Cinelinks.com because I write a lot of things every day for Cinelinks. I wrote some stuff too. Yes, you did. You I, did a great I job. I did a thing. And thank you everyone for watching. And hopefully this episode is a lot better than some of the others. And don't apologize. You had a great episode. All of them. The entire series is good. There, there was one that I had an issue with. So many great episodes. So many great episodes. They're awesome. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>